I know you look over a, a lot of things afterwards and have a, a, a look at the shots, also the referees' decisions, where they were made, when they were made. And I know you've just been doing that again, confirming the thoughts in your own mind. Let me deal first of all, and we'll go back to Port Vale in a moment, but let me first of all deal with Carlisle United. There were a couple of decisions there that must infuriate you now when you look at them. Oh, more than infuriate. Uh, that cost us three points in the game, uh, without a doubt. Uh, mistakes by the assistant. Uh, we scored a perfectly good goal, uh, which is well over the line, um, isn't given. Uh, and then uh, after that, the same uh, assistant uh, fails to spot their lad offside for their goal. So uh, when he's a yard offside. So without a doubt, that's the game in a nutshell. We played well. Um, we controlled the game, created lots of chances. Yes, we were a little bit wasteful at times, but we weren't wasteful in those two uh, on those two occasions because we scored a perfectly good goal. And theirs was offside. Elliot Hewitt stands up. You can see clearly in the lines on the pitch, referee sort of uh, the assistant goes to put his flag up. And then for some reason doesn't. Uh, and it's it's a you know our supporters have travelled uh, seven, seven eight hours or whatever you know uh, and supporters coaches and I just think they all deserve better. We've had it now for 40 games. It started at Colchester uh, on the third game of the season where we're in control in the 93rd minute and the referee inexplicably gives a penalty. Uh, it should have been three straight wins and intermittently over the next 40 games uh, we've had some very, very poor uh, decisions go against us. Every club will say they've had a few, uh, but I'll defy any club to, or I'll ask any club to come up with as many as we've had go against us. Two offside goals at Tranmere, uh, and it just goes on and on, uh, the litany of, uh, of mistakes that have been made, unfortunately, against us. And I think, I think us as a club uh, and our supporters and players deserve better. You've looked at the Port Vale game as well, haven't you? Yeah, no, it's put a couple of. It's just the difference that it makes. A couple of the games recently, uh, Port Vale were playing at home to uh, Oldham uh, just about ten days ago, and uh, one of their best players, midfielder Garrity, made a tackle, uh, which is a red card all day, five yards in front of the referee, in, uh, with an unimpeded view, and he gave me a yellow card. Now you compare that with George Lapsley's. Uh, and it's incredible. So they should be missing. First of all, they might not have won the game. And then the other side effect is Oldham. You know, Oldham are fighting relegation. They then finished, ended up losing 3-2. They should have been playing against 10 men and they may well have got something out of the game. So it impacts their season massively as well. Uh, but what we've been told by the uh, uh, head of the officials uh, is when referees make a uh, mistake, then they are stood down for a game or two to think about it. Well, after this mistake against Port Vale, he wasn't stood down. He had X to beat Colchester uh, one week later. Uh, and then he actually ended up as fourth official in a championship game as a substitute last night. It was Forest were the biggest game in the championship, Forest West Prom. Uh, so when you've made a mistake uh, of that magnitude, uh, I think then to get those two games uh, is quite puzzling, really. Uh, no. Sorry, and then the other one is uh, Port Vale played at Hartlepool. And the handball... Uh, which wasn't given uh, in the penalty area. Once again, a referee looking at unimpeded 10 yards away. It's quite staggering as well. So we've had the decisions go against us in the last cut two, well, 40 games, uh, but especially uh, on uh, Monday at Carlisle. And the difference it makes is incredible. We're chasing Port Vale for automatic promotion prior to the two games, you know, whatever. Uh, and they get a couple of decisions go in their favour uh, and we get the some go against us. And it's a, it's, it makes a, a huge, huge difference, unfortunately. Does it make any difference when people like you make a representation to the, the referees association? Well, well, no, because you know this is what we were told that if the referees do make a serious error, then they will be stood down uh, for a game or two. I think last time I spoke to him was Ch when we had Cheltenham uh, last year in the FA Cup when we were knocked out so unfairly because Jamie Reid was forearmed in the face, smashed in the face, about four yards away from an assistant who didn't give it. Uh, and that player then went on, we were winning at the time, that player then went on to stay on the pitch, score the winner. Uh, and it was acknowledged afterwards that it was a huge error uh, by the assistant and apparently he was stood down for a game or two. Uh, that hasn't happened in, in these instances. Coming away from that just for a moment, you looked at other statistics from the game at Carlisle United, like the running statistics. Oh, right? that's unbelievable. Absolutely. Dave Waldy, uh, uh, strength and conditioning fitness coach, couldn't believe it after the game. He said to have the, that second game in three days uh, and to be at that sort of level uh, it was incredible. I know it's a big pitch and everything. Uh, his words on the on the coach afterwards were, he said, I've not seen anything like that. Uh, we were 15% above uh, with our sprinting, 20% above with our high speed, high speed running. Uh, the Northampton game 
which was a very, very high physical game for us. Uh, so incredible. So that's the other thing for the sport is your team can't try any harder at the moment. They can't run anymore. We had Stephen McLaughlin play yesterday with COVID. Right? He hasn't trained. Him and George Maris have got COVID at the moment, which I don't know if he gets in trouble with protocols. There aren't any more, so you're not allowed. You can do anything you want now, can't you? Uh, so those two travelled up to Carlisle on their own, in the car, isolated in the room. We took food up to them. Uh, they didn't get changed in the changing room, stayed away from everybody and all the things that we can do. And Stephen McLaughlin played for 70 minutes uh, with COVID. With, and the biggest thing, the field, both of them felt breathing problems. George Maris came on for the last 10 or 15 minutes and did the same. They can't do any more, the players at the moment, than what they're doing in terms of trying. And we get frustrated because they, they miss a chance or, you know, a ball across the face of the goal isn't good enough or whatever. We're talking about the base foundation here of absolute 100% effort that your team's giving. And they're giving absolutely everything. But that dints, doesn't it, when you get decisions like they were made in that game, they're humans. That's what makes it worse. And they come in and they're absolutely inconsolable afterwards. And as much as we, and that's why we've, we've come in the day after, because you think about it overnight and, and afterwards, you know, you, you try and be rational as much as you can after the game. And it, it is very difficult. So you go over the thing and I say the players disappointed with some of our finishing and everything. And that ultimately comes down to two mistakes by the officials. That is what has dictated the result of the game yesterday. But you and they, regardless of the unfairness of it, have now got to put that behind you. Oh, of course. Because you've got one ambition, I know what that is, to get as far as you can this season, even if you don't make it. Getting the top seven, uh, and that still remains the ambition. We've dropped outside, it doesn't matter. Four games to go, three out of four at home. That's a huge advantage for us. Uh, and I just hope that we don't get too down about the decisions, because when you get one or two against you, whatever, I think you can cope. When you've had them over 40 games, so starting at Colchester, third game of the season, then players uh, and everybody, and I think supporters and everything, they just get a little bit, oh, it's going to happen again, it's going to happen again. We can't let that affect us. We have to almost above that, and we have to win <laughs> despite that. Uh, and that's the challenge in the next four games. But surely that can't just be down to you and what you say as a manager, a manager has to manage, but with serious professional players, some of which have had an awful lot of experience, it's really down to them with four games to go, yeah. and which you need, I think, Nine points would definitely get you at least into the playoffs, yeah. possibly less because some teams are playing each other. Yeah. I'll suggest to you it could be seven, eight points can do it. It could be. It can still be done. There's no oh, reason nice. for anyone to be totally down now. Wow, we're so annoyed, but not down. That's totally it. Certainly annoyed uh, and hugely frustrated because I think we should be three points close to that total and then we should be three points off third place, I believe it would be, something like that, uh, after Carlisle. Uh, I think when you go there, the disappointment on Friday, we made a lot of mistakes against Sutton. The timing of the goals were poor, uh, the way we conceded them was poor. I think then to react and bounce back with a performance like that, but to, deny the, to, but to be denied the victory because of errors uh, out of our control, uh, hugely frustrating uh, and disappointing as well but it's gone all we've got is four games left we've got six hours of football uh, to get those seven eight nine points whatever it takes to make sure we're in it at the end of the season